So in my last video, I shared a bit about some of the changes that I was making here on the channel and a few of the decisions behind those changes. And the one thing that you guys commented on the most was the fact that I had mentioned that I've been practicing witchcraft. And while some people were, you know, not so very nice about it, the vast majority of you guys came out with words of encouragement and support and a lot of questions about it. And I am so, so grateful to everybody for all of your kind words. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to address some of those questions and talk a little bit about my journey into witchcraft, how I got started, where I'm at in my practice right now, and also share a few tips, tricks, and some resources that might be helpful for anybody else who's curious about walking the proverbial crooked path as well. Before we dive into any of that, I just wanna make sure that I take a second to say, hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Kaylee, and on this channel, I share all about finding the magic in the mundane. We do that through things like slow living, sewing and crafts, connecting with nature, and sometimes, yes, even practicing witchcraft. So if all of that sounds good to you, grab yourself a hot mug of something and settle in, get cozy, because it's story time. So my journey into witchcraft wasn't ignited by a single event, rather it was just a series of moments that just kind of spoke to the depths of my soul. So my whole journey into witchcraft started about a year ago. I, at the time, had been going to therapy for about a year for a lot of different reasons, but primarily to help me with managing my depression and ADHD. And my therapist had given me some really incredible tools to help manage those things. But for some reason, I really struggled with applying them consistently and in a way that just Stuck. Some of the tools were things like meditation, uh, gratitude practice. They were things that when I really worked hard, when I really concentrated, I definitely reaped the benefits from them, but it took a lot of effort on my part and it just didn't come very easily to me. And that was really the number one thing that I was looking for in my life at that time was either a spirituality practice or a community, just anything that I could find to help me provide myself with ease. And then fall rolled around. In order to do something kind of fun, I checked out an audiobook and thought, oh, this is gonna be a cute, cozy little read for, for Halloween season. That book was Basic Witches by Jaya Saxena and Jess Zimmerman. I really hope I didn't mispronounce anybody's names. I will say I do not think that book is the best resource for anybody who's looking to get into witchcraft or begin their practice. Rather, I think that book is great for people who are in the same position that I was in at the time who are kind of on the fence of whether or not witchcraft is even worth considering for them. That book really resonated with me in a lot of different ways, but the biggest takeaway that I had was the mentality that where your mind goes, energy flows. So from there, I just started looking into new magical avenues to help me better direct my energy. When I first began my practice, where I was mentally was just getting through the day. That's all I could manage to do was just get through the day. And I was really looking for something to help me move beyond that. I really wanted to carve out a space where I could just seamlessly blend spirituality and self-care and expression and exploration. There is a certain shall we say enchantment, that comes from connecting with nature, practicing mindfulness, and seeking spiritual growth. I found that witchcraft offered me a way to explore those desires in a way that helped me feel better connected to myself, to my body, to my family, my home, nature, and all of the energies that surround me each and every day. 
An important thing to keep in mind is that witchcraft isn't reserved just for the realm of fantasy. It is a practical and personal journey. If you find yourself hesitant to even look into it because you think it's a bit out there or a little woo woo, you know, I certainly felt that way in the beginning. Remember that the magic lies in your perspective and intention. The journey begins the moment you give yourself permission to acknowledge and explore your curiosity. As I embarked on my witchcraft journey, I became a lot more comfortable with the notion that I don't need to have all of the answers. I began to feel comfort in embracing the uncertainty of the universe's workings. This willingness to explore the unknown has led me to discoveries that continuously shape my understanding of the world around me. Through the lens of witchcraft, I have learned to translate my struggles into strengths. As of right now on my journey, I would describe myself as a solo eclectic witch. That said, I'm more open than ever to growth and change, and I am very much looking forward to all of the discoveries I've yet to make. My first practical application of the craft was through tarot cards. Admittedly, it took me a while to get the hang of them and I am still working to interpret the cards more intuitively, but the tarot has become a gateway of self-reflection for me and has definitely enabled me to navigate my thoughts and emotions in a way that a journaling practice alone just was not able to achieve. Other practices that I'm currently exploring in witchcraft that have helped me tremendously are things like herbalism and kitchen witching. Without going too far into details about it, I've previously struggled with disordered eating and food has been a huge pitfall for me for decades now. Things like kitchen witching have helped me to reframe my focus on food to the more nourishing elements of it and also the way that I feed both my body and my spirit. I still have a long road to go with that, but the mindset unlocks that I've already had just from applying magic to my food and my cooking. Ooh. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, it's, it's really changed my life in a very positive way so far and I am so very much looking forward to exploring that further. Along that same vein, self-care is one thing that I struggled to implement in my life and grounding practices like earthing, forest bathing, ritual baths, and even going sky clad have helped me to develop a self-care practice. These are very simple practices that have helped me to foster a more healthy and caring relationship with my body, just as it is. Again, I have a lot of work to do in this area of my life, but witchcraft gave me the tools to navigate that practice in a way that feels safe and good to me. And I would not trade that for anything. So if you're somebody who's curious as to whether or not witchcraft is right for you and you are looking for different ways to get started with your practice, here are a few things that really helped me out when I was first getting started and that you might find helpful as well. Before you even get started, it is so important that you shift your mindset so that you can approach your personal practice in a way that feels good to you. Instead of thinking of witchcraft as something that is extravagant or woo-woo, think of it as a form of intentional living. You don't have to work with deities or dance naked in the woods, though, hey, I'm not gonna tell you you can't if you, if you want to, go, <laughs> you do you. But witchcraft at its core is really just about connecting more with your inner self, with the natural world, and your intentions. If you're drawn to witchcraft for its self-care and empowerment aspects, focus on those aspects that resonate with you. The craft can be a tool for growth and well-being. 
seek out resources that resonate with your pragmatic approach. One book that I really loved was Waking the Witch by Pam Grossman because it offers a lot of accessible insights into the craft as well as a deep dive into the general history of witchcraft without veering into the overly mystical. So if you're somebody who's just getting started, it's a lot more accessible. Witchcraft is ancient with as many different applications as there are people to practice. Your path is entirely your own. There is no right or wrong way to be a witch. Embrace your individuality and don't feel pressured to conform to any specific belief or practice. That said, not every application of witchcraft will resonate with you. And that's actually a good thing. It is incredibly important to remember that there are cultures that have practices that are sacred to them and therefore closed to outsiders. If a practice is open or part of your personal ancestry or your personal culture, take what fits and enjoy exploring that further. If a practice is closed to you, however, honor its boundaries and work to approach it with curiosity and understanding rather than judgment. Magic belongs to everyone and we all practice best when we foster a safe, healthy environment for everyone to exist in. Begin with practices that feel approachable to you. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think I really started practicing until about a year into my journey. I spent most of my time studying, learning, finding different resources that resonated with me like podcasts, YouTube channels, books. And then from there, I just started with small applications in my everyday life. All that it required of me was to set an intention and to focus putting all of my energy behind that intention. You don't have to set up extravagant rituals or use fancy tools like crystals or herbs to practice. Just focusing on your intention or your desired outcome and putting your energy towards that is all you need to get started. Embracing witchcraft as a practical and grounded practice has changed my life in remarkable ways. I've found a sense of empowerment and self-discovery because witchcraft to me is no longer just a practice. It is a way of life that encourages growth and connection and self-care. And I am so excited to see where this path leads me in the years to come. If this video has encouraged you to maybe get started on your own proverbial crooked path or come out of the broom closet, so to speak. Remember that there is no right or wrong way to practice. The woo-woo stereotypes that are often associated with this craft shouldn't deter you from exploring a path that can bring meaning and self-awareness. As you begin your journey, remember that there is no one-size-fits-all approach. Your experience can be as down-to-earth and authentic as you are. I am so grateful to you for spending this time with me. I hope this video has been able to answer a lot of your questions about this change in my life and coming out of the broom closet. But if you want to know more, please feel free to let me know in the comments and I am more than happy to continue this conversation with you there. And if you've made it this far into the video and you're enjoying your time here and you are looking to connect a little bit further with me and with this beautiful community that's building over here, then I am thrilled to announce that I have launched a Patreon. There you will be able to enjoy more content like this. I will be sharing things like downloadable goods such as art, or journaling workbooks. I will be sharing even more crafts and DIYs over there. I will also be hosting live stream style cozy book clubs and workshops on topics that you get to decide on. The link for that will be in the description box, so please consider becoming a patron because your generous contribution really helps me to create more content like this for you guys. So until next time, I hope you are staying cozy. I hope you're feeling creative. And most importantly, I hope you're keeping it weird out there. I am so, 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 so grateful for you for watching. I love you guys. And I will catch you in the next one, okay? Bye.